Hey guys, this is Kathy with Kathy's Crafty Creations and DIYs. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I am tickle pink that you're here today. Hey, happy new year guys. Thank y'all for stopping this way. And today I have three farmhouse DIYs to show you. I'm very excited about these. They are beautiful. And um, other than that, let's just jump right into them so you can see what I got for you today. All right, guys, we're going to jump right into DIY number one, which is going to be a farmhouse sign. I took three of those Halloween beware signs, and I turned them over and put popsicle sticks all over them for stability. And I took the five-gallon paint stir sticks here, and I put one across the bottom, which it fit perfectly, and one across the top of those. And I have my little pattern laid out because this is kind of what I'm planning on doing here. I've got that gather sign at the top, and then I've got um, a total of three of the five-gallon paint stir sticks and two of the smaller paint sticks that come in the 10-pack. Um, those five-gallon ones, there's like three in a pack of those and as you can see there's all my popsicle sticks across the back right there and i had to turn my sign around because those smaller paint sticks i have to take those and attach those to the sign in the back and it has to come down on that sign right there in order for the gather sign to be able to stand up on its own You'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment. After I hot glued those smaller paint stirring sticks to the back of that sign, I took my staple gun to give it a few staples up the side right there to give that sign on the top the support that it was going to need. I flipped it over and put chicken wire across the back because that's what is going to be the focal point of the top of that sign. And I just took the staple gun and stapled the chicken wire around the top to hold it down. And guys, if you've ever worked with chicken wire before, it can be just aggravating as all get out. So I struggled with it a little bit to try to get it to like pull the right way but like i said if you've ever worked with this stuff it's difficult sometimes <laughs> you see i was struggling with it a little bit do not make fun of this funny hat that i've got on my husband gave it to me and it actually has an led light in the front of it <laughs> i got my antique waverly chalk paint and this is what i decided to actually paint the sign with and I thought I was going to get brave and put it on, and I'm not going to wipe it off. I'm just going to put it on there and use that as a paint. It's the first time that I've used the um, antique wax that way, because, I mean, usually you put it on and then you kind of wipe it off. And uh, I actually liked it using it this way. It gave it a beautiful color. I was out of my truffle, which is what I was really wanting, but, oh well, I, I used this and it worked just as well. So I gave everything a good coat with my antique wax. Once I got everything painted and dried, I used the Home Decor chalk paint in the color White Adirondack. And the way that I decided to use that was put very little bit on my paintbrush and then to wipe most of it off because we're going to use this as our color to distress with. As you see down at the bottom, I've started right there and I did very little. The way that I did it was just kind of just run it across the surface very, very lightly. In some spots, I got a little bit more heavy handed, but it turned out beautiful. So I went across this whole board in that same method and it just made it look like an older, worn sign. I 
I took my black chalkboard paint that I buy at the Dollar General store and just gave it a very, very light coat over that too, just for distressing purposes. The sign on the top that says gather, all I did was take my white Adirondack and go over it with a very, very light hand, like I was distressing because I wanted that natural wood color to come through. I took my sign and flipped it over and I laid my word gather on the top to get my placement correct. And then I pulled off my Cricut, the stencil that I had made that says farm fresh eggs. I pulled off a couple of those sprigs from the boxwood from Walmart and I put it along the sides of the word gather. I used some of that caulk from the Dollar Tree to put in that hole in the G in gather. Then I took the word gather and simply glued it down on top of my chicken wire. So I took my drill and I drilled two small holes close together so we can put our basket there. This basket came from the Dollar Tree and we're going to put our eggs in our basket. We're going to put all of our eggs in one basket. And then I took one of those cable ties, a small one, and just ran it through there and pulled it tight so that it would hold my basket up. And I took one of those little Jenga blocks and I put it underneath the basket so that the basket would like be held up perfectly straight. I bought this garland off of Amazon. It was like 12 or $15 for two big long pieces. And I really liked it. It looks like the boxwood greenery from Walmart is kind of what it reminds me of. And I thought that it would look best if I put this across the top of the word gather also because I had put it at the sides and it just seemed like it was missing something. I took a roll of burlap that I'd got from Walmart and just cut a piece off and we're going to stick it down inside our basket for our eggs. I took my hot glue gun and I glued down the sides of it so that it would lay right. I finally got smart and pulled out those finger protectors because I have been burnt one too many times with that hot glue gun. I took four tacks that are actually upholstery tacks that came off my couch because I didn't have anything else to use. And I put those on each corner of my sign and I think they made a huge difference. I actually took a black Sharpie and just colored those in and it made a big difference too. And guys, here's my sign. It's so pretty. I'm so proud of this sign. The camera doesn't even capture the beauty of this sign. And this was one of those projects that like in my mind's eye, I knew it was going to look good, but I didn't really think that it was going to look this good. So I was like, okay, okay, this is good. This is a good thing. And can you believe I only have like five or six dollars in this whole project? Yeah. Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> That is so crafty and so cute. And guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, I want to ask you, please subscribe. And there's a little bell beside it. And if you hit that bell, the word will all will appear. And hit that too. That way you can see all my videos. Because I'm still new to YouTube and I want you along on this journey with me. We're going to go right into DIY number two. Where we're going to be making a lantern with our family photos in it. I purchased these four wooden frames from the Dollar Tree and as I opened each one of them up, I grabbed my Gorilla Glue wood glue and Loctite Power Grab. And both of those take a little bit of time to dry, so what I thought to do was just put a couple of dabs of the wood glue and then a couple of dabs of that Loctite. Um, and I didn't put them in the same place, of course, and that way this would have a good 
firm foundation whenever it dried all the way. It took me a little bit to figure out how to get them together the right way. And then um, if any of that glue seeps out, I just took a wash rag that was slightly damp and just kind of wiped it off and it didn't dry on there. I really like that Loctite Power Grab. It's good stuff and I use it for a lot of my crafting. So I had two of these wall art boxes that are eight by eights. And then I also had this four by four with the little bunny rabbit on it. And I took the hanger off the back of that. And I got all of that paper off of the front of it because that's what's gonna be on the top of the lantern that you're actually gonna see. That way I could sand everything down really well. I took my small wire cutters to pull out all of those little prongs that hold the picture in because we actually did not need those. I took the sign that goes on the bottom of the lantern and painted it black with that black chalkboard paint from the Dollar General. I took the small box that's going to go on the very top of the lantern and I used my hot glue gun to go around it to put it on that other 8x8 eight eight frame because that's what's going to be also on the top of the lantern. These two pieces are going to make the top of my lantern. Then I took the body of my lantern and I hot glued it to that bottom piece that's going to be the bottom part of our lantern. I then took all the pieces of my lantern outside and I used the Rust-Oleum two times in matte black and gave it a good spray paint. I then took my dowels that I had purchased at Dollar Tree and measured them and cut each one of those off because they're going to go on the sides of my lantern. I then took my Waverly Antique Wax and gave every one of them a good staining. Then I took my black chalkboard paint that I got from the Dollar General and I touched up any areas that didn't look good enough from the spray paint. Anything that just needed to be touched up. I measured to see what size of dowel I was going to need to go around the very top of the lantern and I cut those off so that I could give them a good sanding. And of course, after sanding all of them down, I gave them a good coat of that antique wax from Waverly. Then I simply just took my hot glue gun and glued each and every one of those down. Then I took the body of my lantern and I put my dowels down the side of that also. I thought it would look really good to take like little half dowels and put them on the sides also. I had the top to an old candle that I thought would look really cool on the very top of this lantern. It was round so it would cut up the square, if you will. And I took my Waverly Antique Wax, of course, and gave it a good coat of that. My husband had cut up a small piece of a PVC pipe and I wanted to paint it black with my chalkboard paint from the Dollar General. This is going to go on the very top of my lantern. So I took some of that jute cord that has the wire inside of it from the Dollar Tree and I made two small loops, circles, um, to go inside that piece of PVC pipe on the very top of the lantern. And I'm going to just take and clip that so I can stick it inside that PVC pipe and glue it into place.
So then I took my piece of PVC pipe and that juke cord and I put it, um, hot glued it on the very top of that lid to the candle. And then I took my lighter and burned off any fuzzies that came from the juke cord. I then took and just hot glued this final piece down onto the top and I decided to leave the top of my lantern where you could take it off and put the candles in and out as you wish. Of course, you have to use flameless candles and this turned out beautiful, guys. Oh, it's so pretty. I feel like somewhere down the line, every crafter makes a lantern. So this is just my little rendition. I hope you like it. This project cost about $7.50 to put together. Time for our final DIY. This is just a little New Year's inspiration. I have some mineral chalk paint from Waverly, and I found this little bird at the Discovery Outlet for 25 cents. And then I have another one of those eight by eight frames. I have this gift paper that I purchased at Dollar Tree. Look at this, it's beautiful from Dollar Tree. And I have some Spanish moss, and we're gonna put a little something together with all this. I take that 8x8 eight eight wall decor and I want that little piece off of the front there that says welcome to our nest because I can use that for a different DIY. It's really cute with it just by itself, but we're just going to give this a little updo. So I take my mineral chalk paint and I just painted the whole inside of this decor. We're going to turn it around and reverse it and use it like it's a, like it has a frame around it. I also took my antique wax, uh, Waverly antique wax, and I went all the way around the rim of this um, wall decor picture frame thingy. It's not really a canvas. It's like a, you know, like a little wall decor piece. Then I dried it off real good with my handy dandy dryer. This was probably the least expensive of all my projects today. I would say I have maybe a $1.25 a uh, dollar fifty at most in this whole project so I laid the box down on my tissue paper and I just traced it so I could see where to cut it out at the bottom then I took my Mod Podge and just put it down and uh, put my gift tissue paper down over the top of that and then I put another layer of the Mod Podge and I am drying it with my dryer Then I took some of that regular old lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and some water. I like this effect um, that I get from this. I put it down and use with my fingers. It's almost like Play-Doh. When you add a little bit of water to it, though, you can maneuver it a little bit better. So I use the water and my fingers to just kind of stipple it, if you will, on top of the little bird because I'm trying to make it or just give it some kind of a texture you know it almost looked like little feathers though when I finished it was just perfect so I went all the way around the little bird with this spackling and I actually like doing this I find it very relaxing to do this and the end result is gorgeous every time Guys, I hope everyone had a beautiful new year and a good Christmas. I just hope and pray that this year is going to be better than last year. 
Even though this year I decided not to have any New Year's resolutions, I figured that what I needed to do is not try to strive for anything because, I mean, that sounds terrible, but I mean, you know how on our New Year's resolutions we're always hoping that we can lose weight or become a better person or just whatever the, the issue is that we're usually looking for. But this year, I, I want to just be happy and thankful for who I am and what I have as far as my family. I, 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 we have health, you know, we have everything right now. I do have a sister right now that is in the hospital. She's battling cancer and she has COVID. And um, it's just a scary thing, guys. And I know that so many families have went through this this year. It's not just us. But I just want to be thankful for what I have this year. If anything, this mess has taught us, you know, just to, if we have health, then we should be thankful because health is wealth, they've always said. But until you don't have your health, you know, you don't really put that into play. It doesn't really make much sense. But... You know, this COVID has taken so much away from us this past year. I mean, it's taken away the way that we live. Like, we can't even go to funerals anymore. If someone is sick in the hospital, we can't go visit them to cheer them up. You can't go inside. I mean, it's just, it's taken so much from us. And it just goes to show, to me, how dependent we are on God. Because, like, if we don't have... God to help us and protect us, then, you know, we can lose it all in a second. We're, we're not invincible by any means. And I think that this past year has shown all of us just that, that we are nobody without Him. We need Him. But anyways, I just, that's my little thought while I'm watching myself do the the bird here this this was so relaxing to do this bird and as you saw i used my little pencil to kind of mark out his wing it was raised up a little bit and i wanted to mark it up a little bit but i love this effect guys i'm not just saying that i've done this on several projects and what i do is just set it to the side and let it dry for maybe 30 minutes. I mean, it's best to let it dry for a little bit longer, but if you let it dry for at least 30 minutes, you can go over the top of it and paint and just wait till you see the effect. It's really pretty. So I took my Waverly uh, paint in the color of Cashew and it's kind of a, a an ivory-ish type color. And I took some of these makeup sponges, like those cosmetic sponges they're called. I put a little bit of my cashew out on my wax paper there. And what I plan to do is just kind of stipple that on the top of my bird. You know, I was telling you that the um, spackling causes like a, um, like, it's just like a texture. It gives it a texture. So I go over that and I don't go from side to side or like brush it harshly. You just dab it. That's a good word. You just dab it right on the top of it. I then took a little bit of my mineral uh, Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to do the exact same thing with that. I'm going to stipple that on my bird also just very lightly. I then take the Waverly antique wax color again and just put just a tiny little dab on there and mix it in with that uh, cashew color. And when I mixed it together, it made a very light brown, like a khaki brown kind of color. And this is the color that I'm going to use to make his little beak. Like 
Then I just took the cosmetic sponge and kind of dabbed that all over the bird too, just in a couple spots, just really lightly. So then I just took the very end of a paintbrush, a small paintbrush, and I dipped it into the antique wax and just made a small little dot for the bird's eye. Just very subtle, nothing bright or, you know, I just wanted it to look like a, you know, just like he has a little eye there. I then took my Spanish moss that I got from the Dollar Tree and just pulled a very slight bit away from it and just kind of crunched it up because that's going to be the bird's little nest. Um, I didn't really try to make any kind of a form or anything. The whole bottom part is going to be kind of like his nest because a real bird's nest looks kind of, you know, like that anyways. So then I just put a little bit of hot glue and stuck it down on there. I then pulled my vinyl off of the Cricut. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 I thought that this was very fitting for the new year. That was my whole point of making this last craft. Because to me, a bird represents like a dove. It represents peace. It represents freedom. Um, and so that's one of my favorite verses. Behold, all things are new. And you know, I was thinking about how last year, 2020, how crummy things were. But then, you know, I had renewed hope when I see this verse because I remember, you know what? Things are new. Every day is a new day. So we should just rejoice and be happy in that. Behold, all things are new. I love that. So then I take my jute twine from the Dollar Tree and I just wrapped it around my hand, my fingers, uh, about five times and I clipped it off and tied it and it makes a perfect cute little perky bow. And I decided uh, that I am going to stick it up on the top. I really couldn't figure out the placement where I wanted this at. And then I took um, the jute twine and I went around the side of this about four times, um, clipped that off flipped it over and glued it then I take my little bow and I just put it up there at the top and to make the tails for this bow I just cut off maybe two inches of ribbon and stuck it in the middle there right underneath the middle of the bow and that makes the tails for the bow this is adorable and guys i forgot to stick my little bird in so i glued her down and there you have it behold all things have become new i am going to live by this and i'm going to say this every day when i wake up even if it's been a crummy day the day before, I'm going to say, Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Guys, I thank y'all so much if you have stuck through this whole video. I appreciate each and every one of you that have watched my videos. My little channel hasn't been around too long, but it's growing, and I'm very happy about that. Um... I'm meeting a lot of new people, and, and I'm really excited about that, all my new friends. And I love to hear comments from you guys. Let me know things that you like that I'm doing, things that you maybe don't like too much that I do, um, so I can make it better. It always lifts my day to hear from people saying, you know, I loved your stuff, or, or this was a good craft, or whatever, because 
Um, you never know what the other person's going through. And sometimes it just takes a few kind words to lift somebody's spirit. Even if you don't know them from Adam, you know, you can just say something nice to them and it just makes them want to go on another day because there's been times in this little journey I'm like, no, this is a lot of work. I'm not doing this anymore. But then I get some kind of a comment, somebody really likes my stuff or something, and it lifts me up and helps me to keep going. So here's just a couple more shots of today's projects. I'm so proud of each and every one of these projects, guys. And it looks like I've run out of time. So until I see you guys again, may God bless each and every one of you. Bye-bye.